thing. And you know, I'm gonna keep the hair pretty clean. I don't think I need a lot of product in here other than this. I'm just gonna redamp it. And we're gonna go through using my various different sizes of Denman brushes to get a beautiful polished blow dry on short graduation. Now, for me especially, this type of length hair, I tend to stay away from round brushes. Um, you know, unless it's meant to look really formal, uh, because I just think it looks, um, it looks a bit old fashioned when it's blown out with a round brush. So this is really when I, I love to work with Denman style kind of flatter brushes. Um, they come in three different sizes for a blow dry like this. You're gonna use the five row on the shorter areas underneath, then go to the seven row to start to get some lift in the middle, and then go to the nine row to where the longest hair is. And I even, I will use a little round brush just to show you a little trick for the edges that I've always liked to do to polish the edges. So starting off at the temple, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna use wrap drying first to push this hair down and forward. And you'll notice I kind of section as I go. So I'm gonna work in this area, forward, backward, forward, backward. You know, I can put a clip in here when need be. And that wrapping, that pushing, that stretches the root and gives it lots of movement. Now, a shape like this, I kind of almost always blow dry forward um, so that it has a nice natural fall forward, but also when it's pushed back has a really beautiful movement to the graduation. So this movement here, you notice I come through, I use my finger to keep the section clean, and then I lock the hair in, it's called leafing. And then I follow closely with my Dyson um, Supersonic Pro here and really kind of begin to polish and stretch that hair out. Now, not giving much root lift here, keeping the roots very low. I don't want to bring out a lot of volume on the perimeter. I want to keep this low. Now, uh, this is also going to help me really refine the haircut. I didn't really do any post haircutting yesterday after the shape was put in. Um, so I'm gonna really want to work on that to perfect the edges when the hair is dry. So again, I'll come down here. If it feels like it's already a little too dry, again, I can miss a little bit more of the noni fruit leave-in conditioner. You know, there's nothing um, worse than blow drying soaking wet hair. So, you know, just a little bit of dampness Sometimes just from the right product, to me, is much better. You know, when hair is soaking wet, it doesn't really respond. It doesn't respond until the, you know, the moment, what you're doing to it, the moment it goes from damp to dry, is what it's gonna wanna stay doing. So if you're doing a lot of stuff to the hair soaking wet, it's not even responding. Are you blow drying in the same sections that you took your haircut? Your yeah, haircut? somewhat, yeah. I mean, they're definitely like diagonal back sections. So they're, they're similar. I do a little cross-checking as I blow dry as well. I might come in this way and come in this way. So yes, it, it's definitely very similar. I don't know that they're exactly the same, but they're definitely very similar. And again, you can see how the smaller brush here will allow you to, you might not get a full lock on it, but it allows you to grasp that hair hairline or um, in the nape here, if there's any kind of like whorls or cowlicks. Yeah, that's where wrapping comes in. So if it kicks in a certain direction, you really want to use the brush to wrap it in that opposite direction. And this is the five row demo. What I love about this, it's got a full size handle. Sometimes there's small brushes with small, you can't really work them. I need that distance away. But to control hairlines and cowlicks, you brush and it's as simple as that. I think sometimes we overly complicate it. All right, I'm gonna to go to the seven row here as this hair gets a little bit longer and I wanna get a nice lock and I wanna get a little bit more volume. Come through, lock, and grab. Wrapping forward, backward, like an X-like pattern to stretch the root and give a nice natural movement. And then literally folding that hair over the brush. You lock it in, get tension. And here I am beginning to lift a bit. You know, the higher we go, the more lift we want. Back through and lift. 
So it's just kind of been a series. It's been really fun. I first did um, a long layered cut and then showed how I blow dry that using the Denman paddle brush, a beautiful, um, beautiful tool, and how to do that with the Denman paddle brush and then use one of the Denman kind of ceramic brushes just on the ends to get a beautiful kind of a, a quick but very polished blow dry. And then last week, or maybe it was the week before, we did some blow drying on a bob with graduation, cut the shape and showed how to blow dry it. Using a similar idea here of, you know, closer in the underneath and then more elevation as we work our way up. Um, and then wanted to come in and show you how to work this on shorter hair. So you get a nice controlled, polished finish without it looking too, uh, too poofy, you know, which may happen on a length like this with a round brush. It can just make it look old fashioned. Blanca was uh, mentioning that she sees sometimes people blowing, blowing out without a nozzle. What are your thoughts on that and keeping control and uh, all that good yeah, stuff? Yeah, I think, you know, if you really understand the heat, uh, so obviously when you have the nozzle on, it really concentrates the heat. So you have to really have great blow dry control, okay? Um, if you, for any reason, are worried that you might burn the hair, or your brush? With, with, without a nozzle or your brush, Without a nozzle, it doesn't concentrate the heat as much. But I know exactly, I go through, I know exactly, I'm aiming it, I'm not jamming it in the brush, I'm aiming it at, at the pad of the brush. Um, so I personally think if you understand how to control the blow dryer, how to control the heat and the direction, the nozzle gives a much better, more polished blow dry. And that's coming from someone who for the first 10 years of my career worked without a nozzle. Um, and then as soon as I put it on, I was like, oh boy, what a difference in polish and concentration of your blow dry. All right, so you can see that classic shape there. I wanted to just kind of help lay down the edge a little bit. And sometimes I'll do that. I'll just, that's when I will come in with a round brush and I'll just roll it on the edge and wrap with it. Sometimes that bore bristle will give you a little bit more tension on the edges. So I'll use a round brush to wrap, help to control. Yeah, very, very simple. Just rolling on the shorter hair. It just, I roll it right down the head. It grabs it and pushes it down and then using it to wrap the edges. All right, I'm gonna come over to the opposite side now. Work in a similar way. I'm just kind of leaving the top out of the way loosely. I'll, I'll re-damp the hair again. I don't like to blow dry soaking wet hair. If anything, I would have dried it a bit with my hands first, um, just to kind of get some of that excess moisture out. And then using something like the conditioner, this is lighter than water, and it'll really just kind of disappear as soon as the, the, the heat hits it and just kind of really help to protect and seal that hair. And that's the Lanza Noni conditioner. Really enjoying that. All right, so coming back again with my five row with the longer handle, and starting by wrapping first. You know, the wrapping will naturally begin to kind of section the hair off for me. You just kind of push that out of the way. I don't always use a clip, but just so it's a little easier to follow, I'll clip everything above the round of the head out of the way. Especially here in the temple, we don't want this too wide. So on shorter hair in the temple, I always use the five row, the smallest um, of these brushes. I'd like to ask something about the brushes. So you have a five row, a seven row, seven row and a nine, nine row. row. And the round brush? Those come in very, lots of different sizes. This was one of the smaller, I wanted to just use the smallest one possible. This is a Denman round brush, yes. Denman, obviously when people say Denman brush, they always think of this. But Denman has all kinds, I and mean, they're a company that's been around for decades. I believe it's over 60 years. And they've got all types of brushes. They've even got different combs. Um, they've got some coloring tools. You know, obviously this is the iconic Denman style brush. Uh, it's kind of, you know, we say it's a little bit like Band-Aid. Whenever people talk about this type of brush, they call it a Denman. But Denman is actually a company. Uh, they're from, from the UK and they've been around for a very long time making incredible tools for craft hairdressers. Yeah, I was saying over 100 years. It's it over 100, okay. So stretching, wrapping that hair coming through using very similar sections to what I cut with. 
Now, I think sometimes people do this like fast forward. Like I, I do it very almost slow motion. I grab it. I let the air really aim at the pad and go all the way out to the ends and then place the ends where you want them. Don't just go like, like that. I mean, unless you're just trying to get a messy blow dry. So I can see if you're trying to do something quite messy, how you might do that. But if you're really trying to control the hair, I definitely recommend you focus on controlling the hair. Notice how I switched hands. Right hand on the right side, left hand on the left side. You know, for me, this ensures that I'm getting the same angle of the blow dryer and the same angle of the brush. Whenever I teach, which I do very often, I try to encourage people to learn how to be more ambidextrous with their styling. Um, and I just think it makes your hands better overall. So wrapping the nape, what we call flat wrapping, no root lift at all, just kind of down and flat. If there's some strong growth directions, we go against them and try to control them a bit more. Now here where the hair starts to get a little bit longer and I want a little bit more lift, I go to the seven row. So it's literally got seven rows. And, and I, when I come in and leaf or lock the hair, it lifts the root a little bit more. So this would be fuller than the temple, which we definitely want. You know, wide and full temples, very rarely is that a look that we're going for. But a fuller crown and a fuller top, you know? We want kind of a bigger bottom and a smaller, uh, bigger top and a smaller bottom. Is the biggest row brush a nine row? No, uh, other than a paddle brush. Yes, they, there is a uh, paddle brush has more rows and is a bit bigger. So for me, that's great for longer hair and, you know, for controlling hair. I do, you know, I very rarely, you know, when you think of these brushes, lots of times people think about blow drying horizontally. I very rarely blow dry horizontally. I always tend to go either a little bit more diagonal back or diagonal forward to go across the grain of the hair and get like a more seamless look. I'm also not rolling the ends very much here, um, especially at this length. I don't want the ends to be like a kind of a bubble shape. So I'm lifting, I'm getting a little bend on the end and then just placing it without rolling and rolling and rolling. Um, Blanca was asking about what kind of mannequins do you recommend when you're, when you're working on with your demons? Um, I recommend only one type of mannequin, pivot point. I don't think, why? for many reasons. First of all, the quality, of the hairlines, the quality of the hair texture, and beyond that, the quality of the company. This is a company that's dedicated to being sustainable. They're dedicated to ethical work practices. You know, working in third world countries, it's easy to take advantage. And a lot of times you might see cheap mannequins or cheap brushes. And the chance is that was made on some type of almost slavery, child labor. Uh, where a company like like Pivot Point, they're certified that they don't do that. So you can feel, you know, like you're doing the right thing. All right, so you can see the underneath there is blow dried in a very classic way, and then I'm just kind of bringing it back with my fingers. As I start to refine the cut, I'll show how it can be worn in many different ways. But this is the most classic idea of the wedge or the firefly. And that was kind of the idea of the lesson. But I will definitely modernize it <laughs> using texturizing techniques and refining techniques. All right, coming up into the top, let's find that parting. This hair was cut with a parting, so I want to kind of work with that. Maybe just like a, a light blast of the leave-in. Never working with soaking wet hair. Soaking, now this is the nine row, the big, bigger, largest of these three brushes. The only thing bigger would be a paddle brush, which you know, I could use here. Sometimes if I feel like I'm not getting enough tension uh, for whatever reason, like something to do with the hair texture or curl pattern, I will blow out something like this with a paddle brush, but I don't think it's going to be necessary here. See how deliberate that movement is. You lock and you follow through to the ends and then you don't just let the ends drop out in the middle of the air. You know, I'll show you what I don't like, that. We see that a lot. That just makes the hair a little bit kind of wild. You want to be very deliberate. I remember hearing Irvine Rust, a hairdresser that many of you may remember, but some of you might not know. He was a legend. Um, 
blow drying with a Denman brush and saying to him it was like welding the hair. And I'll never forget that. Come through and really weld it into place using the heat and the brush to shape it and then setting it where you want. So you're blow drying this with quite a lot of volume, max volume. Maximum volume, yes. I mean, there could be more volume, but I think max volume in a modern way. So you see the root now is straight up. Straight up. And I'll switch my body position in a minute to get the crown to even have a little more volume. Wrap drying, coming around. Now we'll come back here. And to get even a little more volume in the crown, I'm gonna turn my direction and blow dry like so. So I can do it. I think it just gives me a little bit more chance to lock the volume in at the root right there. See that? Come in, I can hit down here, lock it in, and then begin to pull through. I get even that much more lift right there. You know, especially since I'm gonna do some more cutting, I'm kinda, of, you overdo it a little bit. You know, you can always tone down volume after the blow dry, but it's very hard to add volume. So if it's too limp, you kind of, you know, once it's dry, it's dry. So I'm overdoing it a little bit here. And then I can refine that more as we start to add additional product. All right, now all we've got left is this small side of the parting. So you can see how efficient this is. And here's another thing, Kelly, if you step back a little bit, as someone who's worked with Denman brushes for nearly 30 years, I have very little problems because look where my elbows are. I'm not doing this as much. Uh, I can lift without lifting my elbows. Look at this, I can lift this hair straight up. Because the way that you can lock it in and really lift the root up, you can get maximum volume uh, without distorting your body. And that's, that's important. I've never had any shoulder issues. Oh, wrist problems. And this is my, it's technically my 31st year now that it's 2022. Changing position again here. Getting that little bit of extra lift in the, in the crown. You know, I will say even with shorter shapes like this, a lot of uh, people that wear them if they go in their, uh, you know, in their little drawer of brushes, they've got tons and tons of round brushes. Um, and then when I show them how easy this is and how much more, even though you can get volume, it's kind of like a modern volume. Um, I, I always, especially when I owned a salon, they always walked out with a brush, you know, because they want to be able to make it look uh, exactly the way that I did. All right, so Chicago's here and saying, well done, mate. Yeah, Sid knows a bit about a Denman brush and about uh, a firefly type shape, that's for sure. One of my uh, old colleagues from the Sassoon days who's gone on to do some incredible things for himself, which I love to see. You know, I think so many of us from, from those days, that kind of Sassoon school went on to create some, something for ourselves. All right, that hair is totally dry. So... I'm going to go now into some refining with the hit with the cut. So typically I work from the inside out on something like this, rather than attacking the edge, I'm going to work on the inside first. I'll go through with basically the same sections that I cut with and I'll work on the top where the hair is longest and heaviest. I'm going to work on the ends of the hair here. I don't want to overly texturize this or I would have cut it a bit differently from the beginning, but I do want to start to, Remove weight. I mean, in a graduated, heavy graduated shape like this, these ends are gonna be quite heavy. So you can see I'm going in with what we call vertical point cutting. So a lot of it is staying the original length so we don't lose the shape, but um, getting kind of a filter effect on the weight here. How do you know when you've done enough tipping? Yeah, you love to just look at it. I mean, I think it's about being able to look through the section, see the space, but still see the length existing. Like I just kind of got there now. When I'm looking at the section, I can see the original length is probably still, you know, very visible, but I can, like here, it's completely solid. Now I want to come through enough 
that I can start to see through it, perhaps kind of almost like read a piece of paper through it. I hear a lot of times when people talk about color, they say you should be able to read a newspaper through your section, um, but then keep the line. So that this would be probably the heaviest part of the haircut. Obviously, it's the longest. It's the, the roof of the graduation. So really going through here. Using my brand new HB Pro AG, this is our, the finest scissor we've ever made, in a six and a half inch version. Um, that's something brand new. We just had our factory. We've always had five and a half and six, and now we've got six and a half. And you know, typically for me, I like six and a half for something like this, point cutting. Um, I can go deeper into the hair. It's more comfortable on my hand. I don't need to kind of jerk it around as much. With the longer scissor, do you run the risk of cutting your finger more? Um, possibly, but again, if you get comfortable in practice with them, I mean, you know, you're always going to cut yourself, but you shouldn't be cutting yourself constantly. If, the, if you're cutting yourself constantly, something's not balanced with the scissor or not, not right for your hand. Are these scissors, Gerard, how much are they? They're five... These are $529 um, at all the, all the different sizes, and they're available at Hairbrain Pro. So here you can see I'm spreading the hair out over my fingers through the back. So again, really working on the top of the graduation. I'll come into the bottom in just a second. But see how I spread it out? Just makes it a little bit easier to work through, especially a round line like this. The back is quite round. The sides are a little bit squarer, so they were easier to hold. So getting that weight out of the top, and we'll come back to the bottom in just a moment. Let's do the same thing on this side. So I'll approach this by standing in front so that my body position is comfortable and kind of seamless. Now on the light side of the parting, I can be a little more aggressive um, because the hair has less of a distance to travel and on a graduated shape like this, it can get heavy on the light side. So I can, you know, almost really break up the corner a bit more. So the corner at the top of the graduation, really a little bit more strong, a little deeper. And typically I like to do it in the texturizing. I mean, you know, we can be kind of really technical about cutting this side a little bit rounder and that's beautiful, but you know, typically I keep it simple when the hair is wet and then I'm just a little more aggressive on dry hair. Now we're getting into the crown. You can lay off a little bit because it's, we want this to be a little more symmetrical with the opposite side. Sometimes when you're razoring, you, you take out weight as you're cutting when it's wet, but mm -hmm. you didn't do that here. What, what's the difference? It's just a different way of cutting. I just cut in a very classic, very simple classic way, which I, I love, you know? I think there's lots of ways to cut hair. I could have cut this in a very different way using the razor, using this. There's, to get this end result, there's a lot of different ways to approach it. I mean, all of the finishes will be subtly different. But as someone who loves the craft, I, I kind of love all the approaches, really. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I love teaching, because I get to teach classic cutting, creative cutting, and razor cutting, and push myself. There is no right or wrong. If, you're, if you feel satisfied and your client feels satisfied, then, then it's right. <laughs> so coming back through, now working from the bottom up. So I went, I did kind of like a pre-lightening at the top, and then you'll notice I came through. I'll do it again, because the hair is still quite dense wide side of my comb, point cutting on this edge here. I don't want a solid line. So T to the, T to the comb. And we're really just kind of going straight in and filtering that weight that's gonna fall across the ear. And as I get a little bit higher, I can get it in my fingers and I bend it over the fingers and go through. Maybe not as deep as the first approach where I just kind of really kind of laid into it, this is really more about refining the texture. The one thing all of this has in common is that the scissor is parallel to the hair shaft. I don't want to make the hair shorter. I want to make it less solid on the ends. That's what we're going for here. And you can see how that changes. And then of course I can work a little bit free form here. To refining and those like tipping and all the all the techniques we use mm -hmm. to refine haircuts that how do you how do you make sure you stay on time that you don't waste it another half hour just now you're late and this and that how do you, you, how do you, really, you have to have a goal you have to like I knew here 
that I was going to do a clean, basic shape that was going to be solid and a little heavy. So I work on the hour. So I would have spent no more than 30 minutes on that, then 10 minutes blow drying, and then, you know, another 20 minutes to refine. You know, so if I work in that, in this manner of kind of what most people would call more of a classic haircut, uh, that I want to just modernize with a little bit of refining at the end. That's how I break up my hour. That's why Demon, you know, that's why I can't get, I, I personally can't get stuck doing a 45 minute blow dry. Um, and you know, everyone's different. Some people are very quick. I'm very slow with a round brush. I'm very, <laughs> it takes me forever. So the Demon brush for me, um, not only gives me a great result because that's important, but I can do it quickly. I mean, I really took my time on this blow dry and I just, but still very, very quick. So you can see how the pointing over the comb through the shorter area. And again, I, I don't attack the hair. The hairline to me is the last thing I do. I want everything where I want it to be before I get into the hairline. So I'm doing all this and then I'll get into the hairline. The very, very last. Here we're gonna do a little bit of bend and blend where I take this hair, bend it over the fingers it's kind of rounder so I can bend it and spread it out. Again, we can see how that kind of gets really quite seamless on the graduation. It takes out any weight. You know, I, I had, because of the density of the hair, the angle of my graduation, there definitely was a little bit of, a, it wasn't a solid heavy weight line, but there was definitely, now you can see when it gets combed down, it just melts right in. And again, you can even, Without point cutting, you can work in a very subtle way to eliminate that. Um, still very technically, but I just find, you know, it getting a more modern look out of it and getting more, I like movement. So rather than working technically, 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 I like to remove any bulk on the ends using point cutting. So again, on these shorter hairs over the comb, straight in though. So you can still see, so back to that question of how do you know, you still wanna be, if that line starts to disappear, you've overdone it. You're doing something very, very different. You wanna go T to the parting, T to the comb. The comb and the scissor make a T. Getting this in the fingers. And this little bend here, I can't, overstate how important that is. That really shuffles the deck and starts to lighten. You don't have to go in very deep. Just go on, look at that. It just kind of melts it in. And I'll continue in that way all through the side here. And obviously this is where the longest and therefore the densest area. I already went into this one direction fairly deep. Now I'm just kind of going into it kind of shallow and looking how it sits when it kind of falls over the graduation on the side. Be mindful about the hair in front of the hairline um, so that you don't create a hole. Um, so don't, I, sometimes I'll just let that all drop out for now and treat it as its own. So everything in front of the hairline, everything that falls in front of the hairline, I'm just letting it drop away. I'm coming up like this, letting this drop away. Probably got a few hairs from the other side here, that's fine. I think it kind of weaves them together in a nice way. You know, another form of point, I can see the thickness here is a little bit below the ends. So I'm using pointing this way, coming into the hair. Anytime you're working with the tip of the scissor, it's pointing. I mean, it literally is some form of thinning the hair. You know, if you want to get some thinness into the hair. Now coming through this area very much on its own. And again, since I don't want to, using that, I don't want to break that up too much because I want to be able to make sure we keep that shape in there. Looking for that movement when it comes over the side. You know, definitely, I think so. The, the original shape had a very 70s kind of feel. And I think with the refining, it starts to get a very 90s kind of feel. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, I still think the 90s was a very great time for hair cutting. Um, it was the time that, uh, where I learned how to cut hair, started in 1991 with Vidal Sassoon. Um, and I just think it was a really great kind of rebirth. It was 
a time when we were reinventing haircutting a little bit using all these texturizing techniques. So I, I definitely feel like we've got a 90s kind of a feel here on a classic look. And also the clients were a little bit more daring with their hair, would you will? Well, I will have, so layers. yeah, if we want to get into that, I mean, I, I will say at that time there were, the, the, the trendsetters were more from the fashion world. Um, it was designers who had their muses as supermodels and the models were doing fun stuff with their hair. You know, whereas today everything comes from a celebrity. You know, I don't, I dare anyone to really name supermodels or any supermodels that actually have cool hair, pretty few and far between where in those days we had them all. Um, so yes, I think that people were inspired by this a little bit more stronger fashion, a little bit more influenced by fashion in general, less celebrity. So now, you know, celebrity is very, very, it's quite beautiful. And I think, you know, it's done a lot for color, but not much for haircutting. It's done a lot for blonding, which is great because it gives us lots of services, um, that we can do but it hasn't done a lot for haircutting because there aren't just, there really aren't, maybe more for, for men's haircutting than, than women's for sure. All right, so again, you can see how important the blow dry was. Working through, using my three size Denman brushes, and if you're just joining us, that was really, I cut this shape yesterday, very classic, graduated shape, and then today was gonna be about blow drying. Starting in the edge with the five row, then going to the seven, then the nine, although I think I got that backwards, the seven and the nine. Very little product in the hair. It really all came from the blow dry and now working on refining the perimeter. You know, the mannequin doesn't really have a lot of hair in the sideburn or there'd be more here to detail, but we can definitely work in here in a nice kind of filtered line. Bring some of this back in. Not that I want a solid blunt line, but I want a nice flow. So kind of holding that back and working it in. Then using over direction by holding it in the comb as the hair gets a bit shorter here behind the ear. And now really working on the edge using pointing and then a bit of slicing on the edge, opening and closing without closing all the way. And you know, a tidy edge that's soft. We definitely could have left it a bit wispier if we were going for something different or perhaps razored the edge. But right from the beginning, we were cutting a lot cleaner all through the whole haircut. Again, using some pointing and some slicing, looking for the volume in the crown, but also knowing that we can easily Tame it down. Like I said, in the blow dry, very often we overdo it. Because if you underdo it, it's not really gonna go anywhere. Meaning you're, it's hard to add volume. It's very easy to tame, but hard to add once that hair's already been blow dried. And I think this also, as I look at it, you know, I think this shape, because we are in a very, you know, time where hair is quite unisex, you know? This is quite androgynous. I mean, you know, you see a lot of kind of Korean male pop stars that have a shape like this. Um, I've been watching lots of different Korean TV shows. It seems like all there is on Netflix these days. And I really like them, I've been enjoying them. Uh, but you definitely see a lot of men that have this kind of a look, that kind of accentuated occipital bone, kind of detailed uh, graduation through the sides. So I think that's exciting that, you know, technique can go beyond being masculine or feminine and just work. Again, point cutting, using some over direction here and here. Not too much work needed on the edge here because the hairline obviously is fairly perfect on this mannequin. So it just needed to get a consistent softness all around the edge. Going a little deeper here where the side seems a little heavier. Okay, I think I've got everything I want. I'm gonna to move to a little bit of, um, this is diamond gloss from our friends at Goldwell. Kind of, this will begin to soften the hair, add a lot of shine, tame any frizz. 
And then I always kind of like wrap dry again at the end, but I, like to, I feel like it just moves the hair around to so get some of this in here. And coming back, I'll come back with my nine row. And I'll finish up again by just kind of wrap drying that hair. Just pushing it around. Gives me another chance to just see how that hair is gonna move and live. See what happens. You know, at this time, very often I'm looking at the mirror and looking to see what happens if the parting goes steeper, or we change the side, change the direction, all the, the above. I have a question about moving on with the, uh, the Asian hookups. They look very airy. How do they do that? I think very often it's using a bit of the razor. Um, now, Lord, because your hair is quite yeah. thick. And yeah, I mean, if I were to cut this whole shape with, with my razor from the beginning, it would definitely be airier. Um, you know, because yeah, it, typically you're working with denser, darker, straighter hair, um, and a razor can be great for that. At least I find it today. Just really reworking this front a little bit. You can see I'm kind of C-shaping. So I come in, hit the heat, and begin to curve and let it cool. I'm gonna hit a cool shot button. I usually just let it cool on its own. Hey, George, what was that? Uh, the last Google product that you used? This is the uh, diamond gloss, I believe. Diamond gloss. It's uh, an aerosol shine spray. Nice stuff. So again, at this stage, just kind of getting my fingers in the hair, looking at the, the shape. We've got the graduation through the sides, into the back, through here. I think maybe just a tiny bit more work on the very front length. I was always being overly cautious here until the very end, because we don't want to lose this corner. But I think maybe it could use a little bit, a little bit less. Sometimes the trick here is to kind of Put a clip like so and bring it around like that. And then we can do just a little bit more refining here. Get that even. Just see, let, the one of the drawbacks of mannequins is they don't have flesh. So pointing on the skin can be a little tricky. So I'll just lift and kind of bring that into my fingers. There we go. And I can get a little miniature version of that on the other side as well. You know, not that it always needs to sit this way, but it's nice to know that the hair is so refined that it all kind of really works beautifully. Especially if you're gonna work in this method and you're trying to be precise, but with a softer finish. You know, sometimes you can leave these clips in or even better, I don't have them on my tray. I've got little styling clips that we can put in here to help with that little bend as the hair, you know, maybe settles down. Taking another look at the nape, I think this worked out nicely. Just maybe coming over here. I can't overemphasize really how important the blow dry is. So with this method of hair cutting, um, the blow dry and, and the Denman, particularly Denman blow drying, becomes part of it. I mean, there is no way that you can perfect the shape like this or modernize it using refining without a great blow dry. And if the hair is very distorted, you know, here we bring out the shape by using the different size Denmans, but we don't distort the shape, but we don't change the, the, the way that the hair naturally flows so that we can really finish off our haircut. So, you know, wonderful technique. I, I like to believe if you wanna see how the basic shape was cut, um, it was cut yesterday, it's here on our Facebook Live using you know, a, a modern interpretation of what people tend to know as a firefly or some people call a wedge. I don't think it's as heavy as a wedge and I think a wedge is something a little bit different, but I know a lot of times the masses start to think of it that way. But really it's a firefly or a graduated shape that's rounded. I do square the front off a little bit more than a very classic firefly, because to me a very classic firefly is very, very rounded. Where here it was a little bit square and then goes into the round shape. But you can go back and watch that yesterday. And then today we did our beautiful blow drying technique using our Denman brushes. And voila, here we have our finished shape. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that. You got something out of it. Thank you to Demon Brush for the ongoing support and partnership with Hairbrain to bring you education. I want to encourage you all to check out the Denman Ambassador Program. It's kind of like what we're doing here. Um, if you like Denman brushes and you want to work with them, Denman will send you all kinds of brushes to work with. Um, and then if you're creating content and sharing it out there, you become part of the Denman Ambassador Program. There's lots of perks. Um, go to Denman Brush US to check it out. All right, guys. Peace out.